Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Yet even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts, and not your garments. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Do you recognize those words? Dust you are, and to dust you shall return. For the wages of sin is death. Dirt, dust. That's what Adam was made of. Dirt is where Adam returns. Poor, dirty Adam. Poor, dirty you. Ashes were a symbol of mourning in the Old Testament. You put them on yourselves, heaped on your head like Job. You didn't have others put them on you. And it wasn't a little dab, it was a pile. You wore sackcloth, scratchy, itchy, burlap, sackcloth, and ashes, a sign of repentance. There doesn't seem to be much a market for sackcloth and ashes these days. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Torn garments, you see, were another sign of mourning, quite costly to the wardrobe in our day. But God desires neither torn clothing nor soiled foreheads. It is a fine practice to mourn our sins, but one that should not be done merely on Ash Wednesday with the imposition of ashes, but daily, hourly, yea, even minute by minute. What God desires from you is crushed and broken hearts. Hearts that have felt the hammer of His holy will and law. Hearts that have been plowed under. Hearts that recognize there is nothing whatsoever in us that should obligate God toward us in any way. Empty, broken, crushed hearts are what the Lord seeks. So how are we to understand those ashes on our forehead today? They come to you in the form of a cross. A mark first placed upon you when God was busy washing away your sins. There and then, He marked you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Ashes today must remind you of His calling you to a life of repentance in your baptism where you were marked by his cross and given one of your own to carry. Christ does not soil you with sin. We do that to ourselves. Christ does not pronounce a death sentence over your head. He saves you from death. He marks you with his cross. He baptizes you. He washes away the dirt and dust of Adam and makes you a new person in Him. He raises you up out of the dust and forgives you all your sin, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Jesus makes you clean. We don't need more rituals, we need more repentance. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Our first father, Adam, sinned. He disobeyed the word of God. He refused the gift of God and the tree of life, and so he forfeited his life. Dust you are, and to dust you shall return. His food now would be hard-earned, bread with toil, his life one of sorrow and sweat. His wife would suffer in childbirth. His marriage would be a struggle of who's really in charge here. Tears and sweat until the man of dust returns to the dust. Yet in the midst of all that comes a promise. I will make enmity between you, God says to the diabolical one, and 
the woman. And I will put something between your seed and her seed. You will wound him. You will crush his heel. But he will destroy you. He will crush your head. Adam could not save himself. We cannot save ourselves. The, deceive, the disease, dis-ease perhaps, of sin runs way too deep. He is but dust, Adam. It takes a second Adam to take away the curse of the dust. He comes not from the dust, but from heaven. Born of a woman, born under the law, yet above the law and outside the law, sinless, unblemished, identified by John as the Lamb of God. Where Adam sinned, Christ was obedient. Where Adam brought death, Christ brings life. Where Adam brought condemnation to all, Christ brings acquittal to all. Where Adam brought death, Christ brings resurrection from the dead. You are the baptized. Your sooty, soiled lives have been washed clean and marked by the Lord, not with a sign we can see, but one that makes you one of His nonetheless. Today we trace that mark of ownership on our forehead whenever we make the sign of the cross and upon the chest to mark us as one having been redeemed by Christ the crucified. In baptism, your sins, though scarlet, have been washed white as snow. In baptism, the soiled suit of sin has been washed away in the cleansing flood of Jesus' blood. So why would we want to soil it again with Adam's dust? This calls for repentance. Not just this one Wednesday of the year, but every day the Lord grants you, daily dying to sin, daily rising to newness of living. Old Adam must be crucified anew and again. Christ must rise through an absolution again and again. Return to the Lord your God. He has come for you. He has come to you. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Jesus will not pronounce a death sentence upon your head, deserved though it would be. Your death sentence is what Jesus has heard from his Father and taken upon himself. <coughs> now you have a life pronounced over you, forgiven, washed, justified, sanctified, holy. <clears throat> what Adam has done, Christ has undone for you, and much more. Do you want a sign during this Lenten season as you mourn over your sins? Then let it not be the one that fades away tomorrow, but let it be the one behind the altar, the one seen today in the mirror that has marked you as one crucified by Christ. There you will see the grief and suffering your sin caused the Son of God. There you will see that you have been joined to Him in that baptism. You have received His death as your life and His caring of your sins as the reconciliation with your Father. Never such grief was there than this. Our tears can only approximate the tears that the Lord sheds over fallen mankind. Do you want a sign of life and forgiveness? Then again, look in the mirror of your forehead today. Better still, perhaps, recall and remember how he first marked you as one redeemed by him, his life, his death. His resurrection. Then trace that sign of the cross upon your forehead and upon your heart, where Christ himself marked you through his servant pastor in baptism 
as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Return to the Lord your God. That is a definition of repentance. To be turned from sin and to be turned again toward God. To your baptism, to the font where that baptism took place, to the altar of his body and blood given and shed for you, to that cross which reminds us constantly of the one who offered his life for your salvation. Return with broken hearts. Repented hearts, we say. He will raise and restore you as he always has, as he always does, and as he always will. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.